Listen, this movie feels like an early 2000s film. Like it's one of those movies that's meant to come out Thanksgiving as it builds up for the Christmas season. But I feel like I already own this one on VHS, so it's definitely a combo price for me. I know some people were having the Mandela effect just hearing the name Shazam, but what's funny is that he's actually the original Captain Marvel. He had his own series back in the 1930s and then DC sued them because they thought he was too similar to Superman. And I guess that didn't matter because they bought the rights, kept the powers, and just rebranded him to Shazam. What's funny is that at one point, way back in the past, this character was making more money than Superman and, well, you know, while a lot of people think we're reliving 2007, bro, it's like the 1930s in here. So in case you don't know anything about this series, I definitely get into spoilers in order to break down why it works. So make sure you go watch it because I'm telling you, it's definitely worth it. Let me explain. Now for starters, I have to pay my respects to Senor David F. Sandberg. If you watch any LME, even if you watch some A to Z videos, I have adamantly praised this dude and this come up that he's had. Like you know how there's an abundance of video essays covering Fincher, Tarantino, and Nolan? Well, I've been shouting this guy out since before it becomes a trend. Like, this guy was in his 30s making short films that he was still hosting on YouTube before they went viral and he was able to make Lights Out. Homie then becomes best buds with Juan, I guess, because he killed it with the Conjuring movie he made. Then as Juan went up to DC, dude comes in and also makes the best DC movie yet. And the best part of it is that no matter how big the budget gets, he's still putting his own spin on it. Like Shazam feels like a fantasy movie, sort of like Harry Potter and The Mummy and that that's the reason why I love it so much, but you know what got me with this? Was that I was looking at the credits of Shazam and realized that his wife, who he was making short films with back in the day, actually played the researcher in Shazam who got Ark of the Covenant, and actually has been in every single one of his movies no matter how big they've gotten. So I was already inspired by his come up, but then I go onto her Twitter account and I see her profile say, making films with my boo? Bruh, then I go on his and he has the same thing? Damn! Like, for those who don't know, this whole channel has been us two. My girlfriend and I watch every single movie together. We go to every single festival together. She's the one who edits all of these videos. And our main goal with telling these little stories has always been to build an audience of movie lovers who, I don't know, maybe one day will give us their LME on our movies. So these two right here have me feeling away. So shout out to all the couples pushing each other and their dreams. Anyways, as far as Shazam, he has the wisdom of Solomon, the strength of Hercules, the stamina of Atlas, power of Zeus, courage of Achilles, speed of Mercury, and hopefully a better box office than his mates. All he has to do is say the name and he gets his superpowers. Here's a wizard what now? Oh, Shazam! Oh, he did it again! <sighs> And considering this universe started off super dark and it seemed like you had to wait for the DLC to even get the full movie, I'm kind of liking this new route that they're going for with the anti-cinematic universe. That could be, that could be its own video. Pretty much it seems like none of the upcoming movies for DC are even connected. There's like a whole nother Joker. They, they swapped out half the cast for the Suicide Squad movie, which I guess is already a reboot in and of itself. So if DC is treating their movies like they do their comics, Personally, I'm excited. If you've been a comic book reader, you know there's like 27 different Batman series going on at the same time. Sometimes the books correlate, sometimes they don't. Sometimes they look similar because they share the same artist. You'll, you'll be reading a book and randomly it'll get rebooted back to number one. I, I don't know. So while doing that with the movies may be confusing, I think, I think it may be cool to have options. That way you may find a Joker you like and that'll be better than, you know, getting stuck with one and having to wait till the next decade. Again, it's a cinematic antiverse. In terms of the movie, you follow this kid named Billy Batson who lost his mom when he was younger, so he's hopping from different sets of foster families. He's raised in Philly, so he's as blunt as can be. Dude's duping police officers in order to find his mom's address, but I mean, these cops were eating Geno, so they kind of earned it. Go to Max's bro. Andy Osho then comes in, who I'm pretty sure is playing the same role that she did in Lights Out, which was also David's movie. She was playing a social worker there, so uh, shout out to the man keeping his crew, but she's the one who finds Billy a new foster family to take care of him, and I don't care how angsty you are. I don't care how mad you are. You wouldn't have to convince me to stay with these nice people right here. I like how usually foster parents, for the most part in movies, have been, you know, kind of getting the negative side of things, and now movies are kind of flipping that on its head, especially with these two who are talking about how you gotta build a home and then show them love. 
Batman is there, Mark who? Billy then sort of befriends Freddy, who's a superhero aficionado. And I really like this actor because while he does look like the Princess Bride kid, not only is this kid hilarious like he was in It, but if you saw Beautiful Boy, he also played younger Timmy and he might just take that mantle in the future. But I love how they're fans of heroes within this movie. And that brings a different viewpoint, you know? It's our viewpoints. They have the merch, the collectibles. They would be the ones waiting in line or shopping on Fandango to get tickets to their own movie. So when Billy Batson becomes Shazam, I was freaking dying in that scene. Like to him, this is the weirdest position to be in because he has no idea that this guy is a wizard. Billy straight up told Digimon over here, sorry, sorry dude, I ain't got no money. And the wizard was like, hey, touch my staff and say my name. It was like, no, thank you, Sandusky. But what's so cool about this fantasy element is that it reminded me of one of my favorite TV shows, which I don't want to spoil in case some people haven't gone to that season, but you know what I'm talking about when I say beings looking for replacements. On top of that, I loved how they messed with tropes. Like, there's always that convenient convenience store where a mugging is happening, but the way that they did it here for training, I thought was cool. Also, how they, how they swapped the beer in the trailer. Man, we don't give enough credit to the marketing team when they think ahead of dumb controversy. We just always complain. Learning Powers Chronicle style was great, especially when they uploaded it to YouTube and then you know, probably got hit with a Warner Bros strike. Freddy then becomes his manager and at a point Billy even gets so money hungry, he's just using his powers like those Times Square people who are in costumes asking for money. That then leads to the cliche of saving the bus from a bridge, which actually was caused by him. I also really liked the villain saying his master plan, but he was too far away. It's all great stuff. Villain wise though, he was all right. As a kid, Thaddeus, uh, you're already setting him up to be one. As a kid, Thaddeus was transported to that same realm to become Shazam, but then the wizard last second was like, yeah, sorry, you ain't worthy, kid. Bro, why'd you even waste my time? Now, I'm not saying getting told you're not special should make you evil, you know? I'm not saying give all millennials participation trophies or they'll become super villains, but if you haven't seen Friday Night Lights, dudes will really carry on a dream even after they've lost it. The dumb part is that this guy wants power even though he already has an entire staff of researchers working for him. My man literally is John P. Sullivan with all the doors he has coming in and out. He's like Waternoose the fourth over here with how obsessed he is with magic that when he finally finds it, he gets possessed by the seven deadly sins. Now these things look like gargoyles that came out of him and I did think it was cool how some like Greed specifically had more hands to reach for more things. But according to Total Film, and I can't fully confirm this because it's not on the IMDb, Andy Circus helped with the mocap, but I don't know. What I do know is that the board meeting scene where he goes after his father and brother, are y'all sure this was PG-13? Dude, for a second, I thought David forgot he wasn't in the Conjuring universe anymore. Like, this was some resident evil deaths that were going on. Chomping on heads, throwing them out the window. Man, I loved it. Then out of nowhere, this scene happens, you know? And I think there's a handful of scenes that have pushed through the superhero genre that have impacted us, like, very much emotionally. You know, most recently is the Spidey not feeling good. I would say Alfred's cry. The entirety of Logan. Well, I'm adding this punch into the mix. The scene where Billy finds his mom and realizes that she didn't lose him, but left him. D David, what the hell? Like, when you think about how every superhero story, like, think about this. Every superhero story pretty much revolves around them losing a parent. And this one flips that on its head by having the parent leave the child. It, it, it got me. Before I wrap the ending, I'll be honest here and mention some things that didn't work for me. Uh, I, I think everybody feels the same way about the bullies. Like... What kind of convicts were these two? I also wish they fleshed out a bit more of the siblings because while I can't speak for them, it did kind of feel like an episode at Jesse where they were just, you know, filling in a quota, mainly because they weren't given much. Personally, I don't think Billy would be the one to floss also, considering how cynical he is. He'd probably make fun of it. But then there was this one thing that may be super minor, but had to deal with the music. And unless it was my screening, there was this thing that would happen in between scenes where the soundtrack would rise while the scene's about to end, but then in the next scene it gets muted. Maybe it was me, but I know some other people were noticing it. Anyway, I still love the movie. Those were the only problems that I had with it. And then there was that ending that I loved. See, this is the part where I say it's a Christmas movie, because all Christmas movies are really about a family working together. I'm not saying that superhero movies don't have that, but usually their loved ones are on the side. But when they turned all the siblings into superheroes so they could fight together, not only did I think the characters work better in those bodies, 
but that entire sequence had me smiling. Like, you know how in Civil War, that airport scene makes you feel like you're playing with action figures on the big screen? Well, that fan perspective that the movie has makes that climax feel like you're superheroes with your friends. That may sound corny, I don't care because I loved it. And that goes back to these two who always work together and have that family aspect. Because I truly believe that the best way for a family to bond is if they work together. Obviously, everyone can still do their own thing and, you know, show each other support, but there's a big difference when you don't have to come home from work and recap your day because they were there with you. That's what they showed in this movie. That's what these two have. And I can concur, it's one of the best bonding experiences like no other. So yeah, I really like this movie. The rumor is that the sequel for it is actually going to be a spinoff based on the villain and considering it's The Rock who's playing Black Adam, I'm freaking excited. The idea of DC having villain movies is just like that villain's month they had in the comics, so I'm geeking out like crazy. And I don't really know what the mastermind worm is going to do. I'm aware of it. I read the comics, but I'll be completely honest with you. Considering Teen Titans already grilled the hell out of it. You mean the harmless worm that uses the tiny speaker box with which to communicate? Leave me be, or I will destroy you all. The only thing you're going to destroy is this apple. Uh-huh. Classic bookworm, yo! I personally can't take it too serious, but it is meant to be a major villain who's actually a genius, it's just stuck in that body. And what's interesting is that it's actually the director who voices the worm, so it'll be cool to see if, you know, it becomes his quirk. If Mr. Mind builds up to be as big as Thanos, if it gets its own miniseries, pops, collectibles, if it's able to create a new iconic rivalry that puts these two in the forefront of pop culture. But what I do know is that y'all better adapt this book first. Thank you guys for checking out this video. I'm curious to know your thoughts down below in the comment section. Uh, I really like this movie. Uh, I know that there are some things, maybe the CGI, I've heard some people have some gripes about it, but I haven't seen anyone who hates this movie or thinks it's boring. Uh, and I would say that it goes all the way to the credits that feel like a Saturday morning cartoon. Um, even that final lunch scene where, oh, Henry, have you not shaved yet? I have no idea why he didn't appear. I don't know if he's has his job. I don't know who's still employed for DC, I'll say that. But the fact that the brothers finally were able to like be there for each other it's a beautiful movie man uh, you know i had <laughs> i'd heard someone come out saying it's about time a male lead uh got a good movie at dc and that's true uh i'm excited for what comes next i'm actually excited for dc movies now after they broke me i made that video long ago obviously i was still watching them but i i wasn't excited for one this movie killed it be it the director because i love his work and, and love seeing his comic or just be it how, how they were just able to adapt it or this new look that joker trailer also looks dope i don't really do uh trailer reactions so i'm reacting it to, to it right here that trailer is crazy i'm curious to know your thoughts whether you liked it whether you didn't i don't uh, i think everyone did but uh, let me know your thoughts down below in the comment section don't forget to comment like and subscribe and you'll get your own dc movie which will get rebooted before it's done